us off with another chronic illness vlog just for you guys. This is part of the chronic illness series. If you guys don't know, we are going to go into an in-depth review and explain what our chronic health issues are. And not just what we have, but in general, what narcolepsy is, how Crohn's disease is, POTS, everything about it. I hope you guys enjoy this new series that we're doing. So stay tuned. Chronic Illness Logs. We're going to be tackling MALS. MALS stands for Median Arcuate Ligament Syndrome. I know, it is a mouthful. It is. Bear with us, guys. Bear with us. Also, guys, don't forget to check out the rest of our Chronic Illness series. We have many more chronic illnesses that we do talk about and that we do go through. So check them out in the description box. And again, guys, we know everyone says it to you. Please like, share, subscribe. It truly means a lot to us and it really does help our channel get that much further, that much out there so more and more people can find our channel and we can try to spread as much awareness as possible. So MALS or Median Arguate Ligament Syndrome is a condition in which the median arguate ligament is pressing too tightly on the celiac artery. Now this can cause poor blood flow as well as a strain on the nerves which causes pain. It is a cause of a chronic abdominal pain affecting both children and adults alike. While the exact cause of the pain is unknown, compression of the celiac artery and or the celiac plexus nerves by the diaphragm can result in pain that is worsened when you're eating and sometimes with exercise. Now MALS, or again median arguate ligament syndrome, big word, occurs most often in thin young women. This one. But it can occur in anybody, don't get me wrong, but this is where it's most common. Well, the triggers for mouths is eating is the biggest one, sadly. The pain can be onset randomly as well. Abdominal pain after eating a meal can be extreme to the point of hospitalization, unable to eat, weight loss, and nausea. This condition does have long-lasting effects on the body and can lead to other devastating diagnoses such as psychiatric conditions, functional abdominal pain like irritable bowel syndrome or abdominal migraines. So sadly, I definitely have had some of these episodes that I've had to go to the hospital because the pain was just that bad. As we're doing this video, the pain is just hitting me hard a little, guys. Now, the diagnosis for MALS is based on a combination of clinical symptoms and radiology imaging. There is a surgical procedure that can be performed that is effective in approximately 60 to 80% of the patients in relieving their abdominal pain symptoms. Now, depending on the area of pain that you have, you will need an ultrasound, a CT, and MRI scans read by a specialized doctor for MALS. There is also a test to check the blood flow through the celiac artery called a duplex ultrasonography. These are all the workup that you would have to do and in combination of seeing all these scans and all this workup is where a specialized mal doctor, not just a regular surgeon or a PCP, a specialized doctor will see all this imaging, all this work, and they will be able to tell you definitively if you do, do not have it. Now, here's the biggest issue with a mal's diagnosis. Mal's patients usually present themselves with GI issues and are often do a full GI workup with no results being found. Think about it. You eat, you have pain here in your stomach. First thing that's gonna go off is you have something wrong with your stomach. Okay, some doctors will even go on to tell you that their patients need to seek a psychiatric counseling due to the GI doctor not being able to find anything. And they'll even get to the point where they say, you have an eating disorder and you just have anxiety. So these are the issues that you will have to overcome and we have to overcome them as well. Okay. 
Now, it sounds bad. The main treatment for mouths is going to be managing your pain. So you're gonna have to be on pain medication to help numb it and try to get you through a better quality of life and through daily activities. The other treatment for mouths is a surgical release of the celiac artery from the compression while also simultaneously removal of the nerves that are being compressed as well. There are different techniques for the surgical release and they consist of an open surgery, laparoscopic surgery, as well as a robotic procedure, all of which have been shown to be safe and very effective without any evidence to support that one approach is better to the other. Now, obviously a laparoscopic and robotic surgery are gonna have a much shorter recovery time than an open abdominal surgery. And some doctors do prefer open versus laparoscopic when it comes down to mouths because of just the anatomy of a person and the complexity of this procedure, they prefer open more often than something else. So there are other forms of treatment such as, like Paul said, pain medication. I do have some controlled substance to help me when I do have increased abdominal pain. Now those are as needed and I rarely touch them. We also do have dieting. You know, being on a specific diet to help with the pain or ease the pain. And these were just suggestions from doctors because at some point they had no idea what was going to help or what to do. So we did low FODMAP, gluten free, all sorts of Dairy things. Dairy free, nut free. A anything and everything you can think about it. We, you know, did everything possible to, to stick and adhere to those diets and still nothing positive came out of it to relieve her pain. So ultimately it came back to a mouse diagnosis with, you know, pain medication and the only possibility to really help is the surgery. Now the thing is there's not many surgeons who do this very specialized surgery. Exactly. This is a very rare condition, guys. So, you know, there's still some studies to be done and mm -hmm. I still just haven't felt comfortable to put myself through such an abrasive surgery. Now, other people do see a pain management doctor mm -hmm. who will do a nerve block on them. And many people who have done nerve blocks or a celiac plexus nerve block have definitely felt some relief. Sadly, I have not been able to find anyone in my area who does it. So as far as doctors, an internist and a pain management doctor can definitely help you with the pain medication to make you feel more comfortable. Some primary care doctors are not willing to prescribe pain management medication like this for an extended amount of time. They'll tell you, I'll give you a week or two weeks worth, you need to go see a pain management doctor. So that's perfectly fine and you can go ahead and do that. Some internal medicine doctors or internists are more willing to prescribe these medications on a regular because they're more advanced and they, again, more specialized in certain areas. Then the other doctor that you would see for the surgery is a general and a vascular surgeon. There are some general surgeons who are general and vascular surgeons at the same time, and those are the ones that, again, would be the ones to do the surgery, and not every vascular surgeon will do the surgery. Only some of them who are specialized and have a, you know, an invested interest in to try to do this and help this because this is a condition that is not known of at all. So the way it affects my body is I am in pain, guys. I'm sorry if you see me, I'm like She's moving, squirming. moving around. We have been going back to back to back videos, so I hope you guys do love them. But my pain can be really hard to the point that I can't even breathe. Moving becomes painful. There are certain moments that I feel like the pain hits me so badly that it uh, acts up my cataplexy. I like drop to the floor, just can't move. All the muscle tone in my legs have gone away. So whenever I eat or drink, it is painful. Since it does affect me in that way, I've had to get a port. I do have my port for my POTS, which is another condition if you guys want to check it out. Definitely check out our chronic illness series. And also my port helps me with my mouths. Since it is difficult for me to eat and drink, I do get vitamin deficiency to the point that at times I've actually had to be hospitalized because I've been de 
vitamin deficient. We've said it for other conditions, um, hydration is your best friend. So the port being able to supplement her hydration so that she doesn't have to drink two liters of water in a day definitely helps. Doing the multivitamin, banana bag, stuff like that, that is what's keeping her out of the hospital. Because before her port, she would actually be in the hospital for weeks or months at a time. And this was all to help, you know, her mouths and her pots. For me, the biggest thing is seeing my wife in pain. I do not like seeing her in pain, in discomfort, and there's not any, really anything that I can do other than try to comfort her, her eating pad, but even that, it still doesn't do much. You know what I mean? So that's the worst part about it. I don't mind, again, having to lay in bed, take a day off, take some time off. It's perfectly fine or pick up stuff around the house. It's seeing her in pain, suffering, that I can't really do anything about it. You know what? I don't deal with these, but I've heard horror stories, and I feel bad for people who have dealt with this. So, of course, it is difficult for people who have this condition to eat and drink. And some people have actually been misdiagnosed or even told that they have an eating disorder. Yep. Thankfully for me, I don't have that issue whenever I do go in to see my doctors. Thankfully, they look at me and I guess I don't give off that I have a mental condition, so they don't really say that. But yeah. I have heard horror stories of other people not being taken serious and sadly having to first overcome this eating disorder uh, and then finally imagine after years of battling an eating disorder, it's finally told to them that, hey, you actually have an issue with your body. Being told that it's something wrong in your brain, it's something wrong in your head, it's all, you're making it up. And then at the end of the day, it's not that at all. So this is where you have to kind of push, advocate for yourself, you know, uh, like I said before, you're gonna have to do GI workup no matter what. They're gonna want to give you a colon, an endoscopy, a Bravo study, small pill cam, uh, motility tests, all these crazy things, a marker test, and all of those are gonna come back perfectly normal and fine. And then they're gonna be like, I don't know what to do for you, which is literally the response that we have received. So that's the biggest misconception, having to overcome those obstacles and still get taken seriously and not lose hope. I hope we were able to spread awareness and also educate you even more on the conditions we deal on a daily basis. Yup. And then also being able to tell you how we also feel as caretakers having to deal with it. Because guess what? You are not alone. And don't get me wrong, it can be difficult some days to the point where you want to give up, you just want to cry, you don't want to deal with anything, but you have to stay strong keep moving forward and just keep doing your thing and also think about your spouse, your significant other, parent, child, sister, well, whoever may be dealing with one of these chronic illnesses in your family and understand them that much more and try to see things from their perspective. All right guys, so there is one more video coming your way. Stay tuned for that guys. So for now, adieu and goodbye.